It's February, which means it's time for a no spend challenge. I love doing a no spend challenge because it sets you up with good habits for the rest of the year. That's why I like doing it in February. It's at the start of the year, but not quite at the start because January's pretty crazy for me with the kids going back to school. So February's the perfect time because there are no distractions. It's also only 28 days, which means it's a little bit shorter than your regular month. And also I like that the 28 days breaks up into four even weeks so that if you want to challenge yourself even more for a particular week, it's the perfect month to do that. Now I try and do a no spend month every single year in February. February is just my favorite time to do it. It's just easiest for me. It's the month I have the least going on. Now I do have to say that I don't always succeed, but even if I don't succeed, it does mean that I am spending less than I normally do. But there have been years that I've smashed it and saved thousands. Although these days my spending isn't as big as it used to be, so I don't tend to save as much, mainly because I don't spend as much as I used to. But it does give your budget a real major shakeup, and you start to really get to know yourself and your spending habits. For example, I know that I can't go into a Kmart without buying a whole heap of things, so I try and avoid Kmart. Knowing that about yourself, you can avoid those places that are kind of might trip you up. But just knowing that you can get by on so little for an entire month, it's just, it's so motivating and freeing. There are so many different rules to no spend months and you can do the challenge however you want to do it, but this is how I do it. The most obvious thing is that I don't go shopping. I don't, I avoid the shopping malls. I don't go out and browse the aisles and pick up something that looks nice. So no clothes, no beauty products, no tech, no extra things. No books. I know, no books. But basically all of your discretionary spending is out. Now that's a pretty simple thing. Most people are able to do that. It's more the next things that start to get a little bit more difficult. The next one is food. Now, if you're already used to just cooking from home, then this is probably not going to be much of a challenge either. But if you're used to going out and socializing, perhaps you go out for a drink with your friends occasionally or grab a coffee with them or go out to dinner, then none of that for the whole month. You're only going to be buying from the grocery store. You're going to be cooking everything at home. It's going to save you money and you'll be healthier too. Now, when I say only buy things at the grocery store, I am not including beauty products. So if that Nivea face mask is half off, no, just food and essentials. That means meal planning is going to be your friend. You're going to have to plan out your meals because by planning, you'll be able to buy ingredients just for those meals. I am going to be doing a video on meal planning coming up soon. I don't know if that's next week or the week after, but just as a quick guide, try and stick with the same meals on a weekly rotation or a fortnightly rotation. That way you're not buying a hundred different ingredients for a month's worth of different meals. You're just sticking to your favorites. That way you'll have to buy less. Now, since it's only for a month, things like subscriptions, are fine to keep because usually it's too much of a hassle just to get rid of it for one month although if you're going to do an absolute digital declutter then and think you're not going to use it again then it may be worth giving up for good but I don't tend to give up any of my subscriptions I actually find having a Netflix subscription really helpful because I'm not going out socializing with friends or going to the movies or any of that so staying at home and watching movies and TV shows just keeps you sane Although I'm going to have to admit something. I don't actually pay for my Netflix subscription. I still use my ex's login and password. He does know. So what can you buy? You won't be cutting out anything that's essential. So things like if you need medicine, so anything that's necessary or any bills that come in or insurances, you'll still pay for those. It's actually just about spending as little as possible and seeing what you can live without. It's amazing when you go through the whole month and you get to the end of the month and you've figured out that you don't actually need everything that you usually buy. Before I start a no spend month, I like to get a little bit more organized and plan a few things. So what I'll do, I'll go through the pantry and freezer and just make a list of everything that, that I currently have in there that I can use up during the month. So I like to try and make meals about what's already in the pantry. And it's a good way to get rid of those things that are nearing their use by date too. You want to get rid of those because I hate food wastage. You've bought it for a reason, so you might as well eat it. And if you really didn't like the taste of it, then just throw it out. I also go through my beauty products and shower gels and body lotions and all of that because I always seem to have so many. I have another confession. I used to be a major lushy and I tried to get all of their shower gels in all of the different scents. So I think I've got enough shower gel to last me the next two years. I do not need to buy shower gel ever again. Why? Shower gel doesn't go off, right? 
Anyway, go through your beauty products and use up what you have. If you want to try and do things like hit pan or, or just try out makeup that you haven't actually used, that you own, that you haven't thought about before, just start using what you have rather than buying anything new. If you want some inspiration, there are so many YouTube videos on people getting rid of their stashes, seeing people with these huge collections and then seeing them month after month just getting rid of the items one by one and I just find that incredibly motivating. You can also do things like look for alternatives, like when I first moved into this house I didn't have a microwave for a few months, for some reason had some microwave meals, I don't know why I bought them, but instead I just used the oven to heat up the microwave meals, just take the plastic off and they heated up beautifully. In fact, I would say that they actually tasted better from the oven than they did from the microwave. So you can try and find alternatives to if there's something that you don't have. The same goes with cleaning. Most of the time you do not need all of the fancy cleaning equipment from the cleaning aisle, which are super expensive. Just a simple spray bottle with some water and dish soap is enough for most things. And if you need something more heavy duty or something that disinfects, there are so many DIY recipes with items that you probably already have. So how are you going to feel doing a no spend month? I always find that at the start of a no spend month I'm super motivated and pumped to get going but somewhere around the middle things start to struggle. Things start to pop up that you didn't realize and you start to go oh maybe I'll just get this thing and no don't do that. Because if you can stick it out and get to the last week, the last week you'll be motivated again because you'll be feeling empowered. So push through to that last week because you will feel so good once you finish the challenge. And at the end you'll be so surprised on how much money you've saved and how much you really didn't need all of those things that you buy on a regular basis. Doing a no spend month really does change your spending habits for the long haul. So do you want to do a no spend challenge with me in February? Let me know in the comments below if you're going to join me and let's save some money in February. Let's do this. See ya.